Welcome back to Chaos Chem. Today I'm going to be showing you how to obtain ASA, otherwise known as salicylic aspirin, or salicylic acid. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the word aspirin, so I say aspirin. Uh, so yes, we are going to show you how to obtain the pure salicylic acid, or in the correct term for it, acetyl salicylic acid, otherwise known as ASA again, from aspirin tablets. I am using Dollar Tree aspirin because I found it is the best bang for your buck. As you see, they are 325 milligrams, and you get 125 tablets for literally one dollar even. And so we only need two things to do this as far as chemicals go we need our aspirin and then in this measuring cup here I have measured out 500 mils of uh, ethyl alcohol this is actually denatured alcohol because uh, in the United States ethyl alcohol unless you want to make it and or distill it yourself it is not as easy to come by as it is in say Canada or Australia unfortunately or uh, even in the UK um, so those are the only two um, reactants that we are going to be using right here I have a one liter Erlenmeyer flask with a little stir bar that we're going to be dropping in we have our hot plate set up here and I am set up for reflux and so I'm going to uh, well first let's go ahead and let's drop our uh, stir bar in there nice and gently and make sure you have a nice strong stir bar for this and the next step then is to carefully pour in our uh, alcohol oh there I go spilling it because this pitcher sucks it is a good thing that alcohol evaporates pretty regularly since it is highly volatile because that just needs dried up with a little towel and it will evaporate nicely and quickly. Um, side note, I have also done this with isopropanol. It works just as well. I had to use it one time when I was in a pinch and I was completely broke and out of uh, the um, ethanol. So uh, if you're not quite sure what denatured alcohol is, it is actually uh, mostly ethanol. However, it has methanol added into it. And that came about in prohibition times because people used to use the fuel alcohol, which is the denatured alcohol. And they used to take it and uh, use it to... Uh, make their own alcohol in their uh, bath stills or whatever they were using as far as uh, apparatus to make it. So then uh, basically when Elliot Ness came into the picture he decided well he realized that people were using this source of uh, mechanical and industrial grade ethanol to produce bootleg alcohol and he quickly put a stop to that by denaturing it, which is simply just the addition of methanol to it. So you are taking the ethanol from its natural state by adding ethanol into it, thus making it completely poisonous. And there is really no way to separate the two alcohols once they are mixed. Um, because they have a boiling point of roughly about 10 degrees difference. So that's just a little side note uh, on the uh, what denatured alcohol is. So let's go ahead and uh, let's turn on, uh, well, I guess we'll wait. We don't need to turn on the stirring yet. Let me, uh, let me get some of the uh, tablets in here and then we will turn on the stirring. All right, so I'm going to start adding some tablets here. And as you see, I am not even bothering to wear gloves because we are just dealing with aspirin, which is in its state and pill form, a rather innocuous substance. 
and the denatured alcohol is not toxic unless it is ingested. So since I am not dealing with any toxic chemicals today, I am not wearing gloves. Okay, so now what I recommend to do in this part is actually to crush the aspirin tablets first into a powder using either a coffee grinder or a pestle and mortar that can be done without crushing them and so I am just going to demonstrate how it works without crushing them so that you can see it in case you do not have access to a coffee grinder or pestle and mortar that you can use so we will turn our stirring on and then what I do actually we should turn our heating on too heat is not necessary for this however it does expedite the reaction so what I do is I drop in about 10 at a time oh actually I've got more in my hand I'm just going to go ahead and dump all these in you don't want to add too many all at once because um, you could end up uh, super saturating your solution and uh, you really don't want to do that because then you're just going to have uh, actual acetic acid just falling down into the bottom and you don't want it to be crashing out. You want it to stay in solution here. All that you want crashing out of this uh, is basically all of the extra stuff in the pills like the cellulose and other pill binders that are in there okay so you can see that our tablets are moving around they are starting to dissolve and we have got plenty of alcohol in there I know to dissolve more than those amount of tablets so I'm gonna add in some more and so we have added in roughly a quarter of the bottle here once this addition is done so that is about um, about 65 tablets or so okay now you do not need to have a reflux condenser for this step however uh, I am choosing to use one because this helps us uh, keep the loss of our ethanol under control as the reaction is going on. Now that joint was already greased if you were wondering. And so now we have our reflux set up. You can see it there. And so now we just basically we wait until the tablets that we have added fully go into solution and then we can come back and add more. You can see here that our tablets are pretty much all dissolved. Let's zoom in just a little bit so you can get a better look. You can see just a couple of them floating around in there. However, we are going to wait till they fully dissolve and then we will add some more. Okay, it has been roughly another one minute exactly not roughly exactly that makes any sense all of our tabs are dissolved so let's uh, back our condenser off of here and let's add in some more tabs now in the 500 milliliters that we have there that should be plenty sufficient to actually do a, all 125 of these tabs if I remember correctly from doing this the previous runs Okay, so with this addition here, we have added uh, about 72 of these tabs, which is then about half the bottle. Drop our condenser back down on. And now we wait until those dissolve. Alright, just checking back in with you guys here. 
I had just added the remainder of the tablets, as you can see from the empty aspirin bottle here. Now, I recommend saving these containers because they are very nice storage containers for chemicals that you're going to make and want to store. They have a very nice seal with the lid, um, which is something that is uh, sometimes hard to find with uh, containers that you are saving to be used later. A lot of times the lid just does not make a good enough seal to store uh, dry reactants. So, a little side tangent there. And uh, so we are waiting now for the rest of the tablets to dissolve and then we can move on to the filtration step. Okay guys, we're ready to filter it. What I did was I decanted it into a uh, different beaker because I'm actually going to use our uh, reaction vessel to collect everything. Um, so what we are doing here is we are filtering this on a threaded filter but we are filtering it through sea light. And what this does is this will allow the ASA in solution to pass right through. However, the uh, contaminants of the pill binders and cellulose that is going to, well, it already did crash out into here, it will just get trapped on top of the sea light because the frit is not quite um, fine enough to keep all of that out. So if you were to try to filter it just through the frit, you would end up with a bunch of those contaminants in your solution and then just have to filter it again. Another thing I will say here before I filter it, and I'm going to cut the video before I filter it so you guys don't have to listen to the um, vacuum pump, uh, is that you want to try to filter the solution while it is still warm because the ASA uh, is going to be dissolved a lot more uh, readily and it will stay in solution while it is warm. Uh, there's enough volume of solution here that if it cools down you really shouldn't have too much of a problem but I always try to filter it while it is warm. So I'm going to go ahead and filter this you guys know what that looks like and then I will show you what the filtrate looks like. Alright so the filtration is complete and we decanted it into a beaker because now what we need to do is reduce the solution enough that it becomes so super saturated that the uh, ASA crystals can uh, fall out of solution. Now something interesting that you should notice when you go to do this is, let me take away my insulation. Uh, let me see if the camera is picking it up. Yeah, it, it sort of is here a little bit. So, yeah, let me just get this off of here so you can see it a little better. Okay, if you notice, i put my hand behind it maybe. Uh, you can't really see it too much on camera. What I am trying to show you guys is that your solution of salicylic acid and alcohol should have a slight pinkish color to it at this point and that is completely normal you should expect that <clears throat> and uh, I'm not quite sure why that is it's just something to do uh, with the reaction that always happens and uh, so now all we are doing is we are waiting for this to reduce down by uh, you need to at least reduce off about one-third of the volume and normally I do this under uh, distillation so that I can uh, recollect the uh, clean alcohol however I just did not feel like setting up a whole distillation apparatus for the purposes of this video and I just happen to have a ton of uh, alcohol methyl or ethyl alcohol available right now so the loss of it really is not going to bother me too much uh, however, if you want to uh, conserve your alcohol and save it again for future use, I would recommend doing this uh, with simple distillation. So we will come back uh, once this is completely reduced and you can see what the crystal precipitation looks like. Just wanted to show you guys this right here, specifically on the rim of the beaker here. Those are actually... ASA crystals, salicylic acid crystals that have um, 
already um, crystallized. And that was just as I was pouring the alcohol in, some of it that uh, got on the rim evaporated off immediately. And you can tell that the solution is pretty damn saturated because just in the evaporation of that little bit of alcohol, we've got all these little crystals that are formed of salicylic acid. And what I'm going to do is actually take a spatula and knock them back down into solution so that they crash out all into the bottom just makes it easier for removal uh, however I just wanted to show you guys uh, that there is definitely salicylic acid in this solution even though it, it is relatively clear hey guys last time uh, we were here we were waiting for our acetyl salicylic acid to crash out of solution and crystallize and it is done so. I filtered it off using a quick gravity filtration and you can see here that this is what it looks like once it is completely crystallized out. Forms nice solid clusters of completely clear crystals. And they will have a slight pink hue to them when you first have done it and emptied them out uh, and that is just residual alcohol that is left in there. They will turn completely crystal clear once it is all done. So now we just put them on a plate and let the rest of the alcohol evaporate off. And this is ready for use for whatever you want to use it for. I'm going to be using this in an upcoming video for the synthesis of picric acid. And that's uh, really the only immediate use that I have for this. You could theoretically take this and make your own uh, I guess uh, Stridex pads what would be uh, I know I'm using a brand there but so let's just say acne medication because salicylic acid is one of the number one mostly used uh, things in the OTC acne medication pads you can get it's either always that or benzoyl peroxide and I uh, don't have all of the ingredients to make the benzoyl peroxide, nor do I need acne medication, so we will just stop with saying that uh, you can take this and just basically solubilize it in some alcohol and some water, and that is basically what you have in the OTC acne medication pads. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Be prepared for upcoming ones. Please like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.